Hello everyone, welcome to the SQRT channel. In this video, I'm going to take two problems from the 2019 Duke Massmith individual round. Let's talk about the problems. In the first problem, we have this compute the value of n and we see n is given based on sum or subtractions of a few terms. For the second problem, we are given x less than or equal to 2019 as a positive integer divisible by 2 and 5 but not by 3. And we know that 7 is one of the digits in x. Now we are asked to find the number of possibilities that we can have for values of x. Let's talk about the first problem. In the first problem, we are given this n and we want to compute it. Obviously, we are not allowed to use any calculator. How we are going to do that? In the normal situation, we need to be able to write this n as a expansion of something. Let's take a look and see how we are going to write this as an identity. We have this power of 3 and then the value that we have is 818 and we see that here and here. So obviously one of the values that we are going to take is this 818. And then we see that we have this power of 3, power of 2 and power of 1. So things are very reasonable up to this point. So I'm going to use this power of 3 here. The next thing that I'm going to do is to find the second term here to be able to continue what I have. You can see that we have this 2009, which is interesting. So I'm going to put it here. And then remember when we have <coughs> this value, it's going to be the first one to the power of 3 and then the second one to the power of 3. But the second one to the power of 3 is not matching what I have here. So I need to use this negative 2 times this 2009. Let me write it in a very better way. So it's going to be minus 2 times 2009 to the power of 3. And if you take a look and verify this, you can see that basically it's going to end up with what you have here exactly like that. So the problem actually is very simple. So in this case, we can calculate what we have inside this with hand, which is going to be 400 to the power of three, and then the rest is going to be 64, and we have six zeros in front of it. So the first problem is actually very simple. However, let's talk about the second problem. The second problem is a little bit more tricky. I'm going to focus on that for now. So in this problem, we are given X and we know that X is positive. And we also know that the maximum value that X can get is 2019. So when it asks for number of possibilities of X, it's very important to have these bounds for X we know that x is greater than 0 and then less than or equal to 2019. So it's possible to count the number of cases because it's bounded. We also know that it's divisible by 2 and 5. So we have this 2 and 5 and we know that we can write x as let's say 2k for something value, some value of k and we know that we can write the x as 5, let's say, k prime. So what does it mean? So basically it means that we can write x as 10, let's say, k1. So here, basically what we got from the assumptions is if something is divisible by 2 and 5, then it's going to be divisible by 10. And what does it mean now? It means that the rightmost digit of x is going to be 0. It's very important to understand that because it's going to help us 
to limit the number of cases that we are going to have. Now it says that it's not divisible by 3. I'm going to highlight it so I'm not going to forget that. And then let's read the rest of the sentence. It says that 7 is one of the digits. So by now we know that x is limited to, to be less than 2019 and positive. We know that the rightmost digit is 0 and we know that it has 7 as its digits. So let's talk about the cases. Obviously x can be single digit, two digits, three digits, and four digits. So let's talk about each case here. So if it's one digit, then two digits, three digits, and then four digits. Since we know that x is divisible by both two and five, so it's going to be just zero. And we also know that x is going to be a positive integer, so we don't have that case. So if it's just a single digit, we don't have any case here. So it's unacceptable. For the two digits, we know that the rightmost digit is zero. So it's going to be zero. And we also know that seven is one of the digits. So the next value that we have is seven. So 70 is one of the possible cases, but it says that it's not divisible by three. So it's acceptable and we have one possible case here. Now let's talk about three digit numbers. We know that zero is the rightmost digits. We know that seven is one of the digits, so it can be something seven zero or seven something zero. Now we need to find this value that we have for the missing digit. Since it's not divisible by three, the possible cases that we have is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. So let's talk about those. So we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And for this particular case, we cannot have zero. So for that case, let's talk about what we have here. So if we put two, it's going to be divisible by three. So this is not acceptable. And then the other case that we cannot have is seven plus three is 10, seven plus four is 11, seven plus five is 12. So this is not acceptable too. And then the next value is seven plus eight. So this is not acceptable too. So the number of cases that we can have is one, two, three, four, five, six. So for this value here, we have six possibilities. On the other hand, for this value here, we have seven possibilities. The reason is we can have zero two. So we have seven possibilities here, and then the number of cases that we can have is going to be six plus seven. Now we need to consider one case. That's the tricky part. Let's assume that we pick seven here and then we pick seven here. So we are going to end up with exactly the same value. So we need to reduce that. So the number of cases that we are going to have is 12 cases when we have these three digits. So I'm going to highlight this here, highlight this here, and then talk about the rest. For the rest, let's see what we are going to end up with. First of all, it's going to be four digits. So what we are going to have is, we can have this seven, A, B, zero, seven, or we can have this A, seven, B, zero, we can have this A, B, seven, zero, and these are the cases that we can have. So these values need to be less than 2019. 2019 is something that I'm going to write here. 
So obviously, if it's seven at the beginning, it's not acceptable. So it's going to be bigger than that. So this case is not acceptable. Now from these two, if I just pick two for A, it's going to be bigger than this 2019. So for this case, A needs to be one. So I'm going to limit this to one, seven, B, zero. And then for the rest, what I'm going to have is here A and B, they are going to be something that I can work with. Obviously A can be one and then B can be any number seven zero. A cannot be two or A can be two but B needs to be zero and then we are going to end up with seven zero which is more than 19. So this case is not acceptable too so I'm going to ignore that. So the two cases that I have is 17B0 and 1B70 and I'm going to work with them to see if these are acceptable. So let's move these to the next part and talk about the possibilities. So I have this 17B0 and 1B70. Now we want to see how many possibilities we have here. So again, the cases that I'm going to talk about is we can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 4, B. Which ones are acceptable? So if I put 0 here, so I have 7 plus 1, which is going to be 8, and it's basically not divisible by 3. So 7 is good. Uh, so zero is good, one is not, then I'm going to end up with four is not good, and then eight is not good too. And then seven is not good too. So the number of cases that I have is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I have seven cases here. For the second part, I'm going to end up with exactly the same thing because I have this 1, 7, and 0. So I have 7 cases here too. Is there any similarities? Remember we ignored 7 here, so these two are not going to be the same because 7 is not a possibility for B. So I have 7 plus 7 or 14 cases here. Now let's go back to count all the possible cases. So I have 14 cases here, I have 12 cases here, and I have one case here. So the total number of cases that I have is 1 plus 12 plus 14 or 27 as total number of cases and we solve the problem. Thanks for watching the video. If you would like to see more puzzles, math involved activities and problems from different math competitions and Olympiads, please subscribe to this channel. This is the SQRT channel and I hope to see you in the next video.